Well, now I'd like to introduce Doug Wade. Um, Doug is the acting director of the Advanced Simulation and Computing Program and the Institutional Research and Development at the National Nuclear Security Administration. As uh, Steve mentioned, uh, the ASC office also provides some of the funding for CSGF. Um, in his position, Doug uh, provides federal oversight for research and development at uh, Los Alamos, Livermore, Sandia, and the Nevada Nuclear Security Site. Um, he's also in the office responsible for the development of next generation computing facilities that are located, to be located at the, uh, at the labs. For 20 years, Doug was nuclear research officer and staff scientist with the U.S. Air Force and missile launch officer. So he's also been involved with the uh, uh, Defense Programs Office of Budget Analysis and was Director of Defense Programs Strategic Planning. So let's welcome Doug Wade. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, as you notice in the uh, agenda, Kathy Alexander was supposed to be here today and she got called away. Uh, she's my boss. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, and sends her regrets. Uh, let's see. How do I do this? There we go. As mentioned, I am currently heading the Office of Advanced Simulation and Computing in the National Nuclear Security Agency. Uh, our mission is basically to provide the simulation capabilities necessary to support the U.S. nuclear deterrent. Includes both the stockpile as it exists today and to prepare for what's coming in the future. In order to do so, we need to also provide cutting edge uh, computer capabilities, simulation capabilities, and facilities uh, for the R3 laboratories Los Alamos, Sandia, and Livermore. Let's see. Uh, basically, stockpile stewardship depends on cap simulation capabilities in the fact, uh, from my point of view, the only purpose the stockpile, uh, stockpile stewardship program exists is to provide the information necessary to support the codes, because the codes is the res uh, repository of all our understanding of nuclear weapon science. They uh, basically allow us to not conduct underground nuclear tests anymore to assure the continued safety and security of the stockpile. However, and <clears throat> excuse me, to do this, uh, some of the most complex codes ever devised are needed. Large multi-physics codes that each of them run around a million plus lines and have been developed over a couple of decades and at very great cost. We are seeing problems in the immediate future, we're already starting to get hit with these problems because the changes that the computer industry is taking. Basically, uh, computer architectures have gone through a number of uh, regimes uh, over the, since the 1960s, starting with the vector machines. I first started programming a Cray-1 too long ago, <laughs> My early 1980s. That gave way to the, uh, uh, what we've been into for a fairly long time now, the distributed memory, uh, multi, uh, basically using com commercial uh, off-the-shelf uh, technology in large ranges. Right now we're moving into a regime which uh, we haven't been before. That's the direction the computer industry is going. We're coming to an end of the performance you can get out of the uh, existing technology and it's being made up for, has been made up for a while now to go to uh, increasing levels of parallelism. And that's about to explode even more so than it has been to date. The net result is for us, we get a faster computer and our simulations run slower. And that's going to continue because when we wrote these 
uh, codes. We were in an era which we've been on, into up till almost now, where uh, CPU time was very precious and memory was available. We had plenty of memory available. We wrote codes that took advantage of that so that they run efficiently. We're entering an era where just the reverse is true. Uh, flops, you know, the mini core, uh, GPUs, we have all the flops we need right now, but it's the memory, really the data movement, that's restricting us. Uh, as a result, as I said, we are already on the highest level, highest tier of computing we've got, the Sequoia machine. We're seeing our codes run more slowly than they did on the previous one. And that's going to require, if not uh, mitigate it, that's going to require, I was going to see us at least stagnate over the coming looking at between now and when Exascale would be online, uh, a 600% loss in performance, potentially. Now, we are taking a number of steps to mitigate this. There's nothing inherent in this except for our computer architecture, I mean, our code architectures, excuse me. Uh, we're, but basically, we're going to have to rewrite or evolve our current codes, which are, again, were very difficult to build and maintain in the first place to take advantage of the new uh, uh, structures. And we're also looking at writing from scratch new codes to design from the bottom up to take advantage of the architectures. An example is uh, in the past, uh, we stayed away from higher order schemes because uh, in solving a lot of the physics problems involved because they took up a lot of uh, CPU power. And instead, we just heavily zoned the problem. In the future, we'll probably go to reverse. We're looking at a lot of high order schemes. Uh, and the machines that are going to drive us this way are a number of them that we have in uh, coming at us. Trinity is on the floor now at Los Alamos being checked out for the first phase. Uh, that machine actually is going to come in in two phases. The first one is looks pretty much like the existing architectures with a few improvements, such as burst buffers. But uh, the second phase will be using the uh, Knight's Landing mini-core uh, chips, and that's going to cause us to, uh, again, take a difference in uh, how we program these things to take advantage of it. There is, as Steve mentioned, we are very tightly joined with the Office of Science computers. They've got the equivalent machine going in at uh, Lawrence Berkeley, uh, the Cori machine. After the uh, Trinity machine, and NSA will be citing a replacement for the current Sequoia machine at uh, Livermore. This one will be Sierra, called Sierra. And as you can see, it's, we're looking at something in the 150 petaflop class. This is going to be a new CPU architecture for us. It's based on the IBM Power series, and it's also going to have GPUs, which uh, is new for the NSA, although uh, Titan has uh, GPUs. But again, different architectures, and let's see. Okay. Beyond that, we've just recently approved uh, initial concept uh, development for the uh, follow-on machine, our ATS-3 advanced technology system to go in at Los Alamos. Uh, that machine will be named Crossroads. And that will probably be the last machine we have before we get to Exascale. Or excuse me, the ATS-4 will be the first Exascale machine, we hope. Exascale itself uh, is coming. It's coming in the early 2020s. Exascale, though, can not sure our CMOS technology, which we've relied on for decades now, is coming to an end, at least for getting additional performance out of it. We're beginning to look at other technologies that uh, may someday supplant it, uh, things like uh, quantum computing, uh, neuromorphic. We're at the very earliest stages, but these are technologies that you all will probably have to deal with during your careers. It's, you know, or a decade or more away. Uh, there's also other non-CMOS technologies that may come in, and some of you will help uh, pioneer all of that. Let's see. Is that 
you people here are the source of the future. You, you are the future. Uh, you're going to be the ones that uh, figure out how to adapt to uh, meet these challenges of new, new ways of uh, writing code, new algorithms that can be implemented to solve a variety of problems. So, with that, uh, I said we have no choice to, but to go with where we're going. Uh, we need. We are not doing exascale for the sake of doing exascale. We do, at least on we, well, on both sides, on the national security side, we have problems right now that we know how to solve, but we can't. So we're going to continue to pursue these uh, computers. Uh, we recently shut down a calculation that we ran on a petaflop class machine for almost a year just because the machine wasn't up to it. Hopefully we'll restart that on, well, we will restart that on Trinity and see if we can solve this. As I said, we know the way to solve the problem, we just don't have the computational power. And we will continue to push the state of the art until we can answer the questions we need. And again, it's going to depend on people in this room to help us get there. With that, I will take questions.